part of this now. It's it's I'm one of you. I'm not I'm not just your elected official, but I'm part of this community and and people just accepted me as one of their own and and so for me that was that was a surprise, but it was also it was great. That was wonderful. I just really want to call out how great that is that you said that because I know a lot of millennials worry about campaigning where they live because millennials, you know, not all of them, but a a fairly large percentage of millennials don't live where they were born or raised. Um, and I know that's something that's occurred to me and that's something that's occurred to most of my friends of my age range who have considered running for office that they might be considered outsiders because they've only lived in their town, you know, two years, three years. And so that's really good to hear that it really does matter more whether you can make a connection with people than whether you, you know, live in that area your entire life. Right. And and also, so I would say you have to come off, you have to be authentic. You have to be yourself. So mm-hmm. I didn't agree with everything everyone said, but they just want to see that you're genuine and honest and also that you're you're competent and you can do the job. And, um, you know, people accepted me for who I was and, and I accepted them for who they were. And, oh, believe me, I met all kinds of people everywhere I went. And, <laughs> you know, you just never know what was going to be behind the door. And, um, you know, they saw that I accepted them and they accepted me. And, and again, it, it's all about building relationships. You're just building relationships. Do you feel that you actually did face any sexism in your campaign? Did you experience any sexism um, from other candidates or from um, people you were just talking to during your canvassing? Did you feel like you had any sort of experience of institutional sexism during the campaign? I did not at all. And I think, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing some of it might have been due to the fact that as you know, I'm, I'm older, I'm not 25. And I came across, I hope I came across as a professional. I came from a professional background. So I tried to present myself in terms of, of what my work experience was and what my skill set was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I would say to a lot of women is, is don't focus on your resume. You never want to talk about your resume. You want to talk about your skill set. What can you do? What can you bring to the office? You know, you don't want to tell people what year you graduated from college. You don't need to tell them how old you are. Um, people really don't care as long as you can demonstrate that you're competent and you can do the work. But in some ways, I, I experienced it's not really sexism, but I think in some ways, maybe because I was a woman, people were more likely to open the door to me. Mm-hmm. You know, so having a man come to the door and if a woman's home alone, maybe they, they might have been less likely to open the door. But for me as a woman, and I'm I'm a relatively, you know, I'm not tiny, but I'm a shorter, smaller woman. So I was very non-threatening. So I think in that way, I got a lot more people to open the door for me than than if I was a man. And my husband always stood far enough away so people couldn't necessarily see me. But I also think that, like for my for my opponent, he may not have taken me as seriously being a woman. He may have thought, well, she doesn't know what she's doing, or she's never done this before. And the other really fascinating thing was, you know, my husband was very active in the community, much more active than I was. Again, on purpose, so I would keep my profile low. And it wasn't until like the very end of my campaign where the the other supervisors even knew we were married. They're like, oh, are they married? Because we, I've kept my maiden name. Mm-hmm. So it was fascinating, you know, because they, they assumed, like, if I didn't have the same name as him, like, were we, were we married? Are we living together? So that was fascinating, too. So in some ways, being a woman was actually an advantage, I think. Are you seeing a wave of women running in your area? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yes, absolutely. And let me tell you the reason why. The reason why... I think I speak for a lot of women is we've seen what has happened in this country with all these, you know, men in charge. And my attitude is, you know, I'm just going to stand up and see if I can make a difference. And I think a lot of other women feel the same way. We're tired of, of, of men making all the decisions for us and looking at, you know, looking at us as if we're, you know, the little mother or the little wife or something like this, and not really taking us seriously as professionals, um, as intelligent people um, who have the right to to make decisions about their future. And I think for a lot of us, and certainly for me, 
it's like enough already. This is ridiculous. It's the 21st century. When are things going to change? And if they won't change, we're not going to sit around and wait for things to change. We're going to stand up and make the change ourselves. So for me, that was a lot of it. Um, I didn't really think kind of intellectually about me myself being a woman, but I also said, well, I can do it. I didn't, I didn't feel there was any reason I couldn't do it. And I, and I, and I look at the state house in Pennsylvania and we're like, we're way at the bottom in terms of percentages of women in the state house. It has to end. And it only ends if people stand up. And a lot of my friends stood up in local townships. And like me, none of us had ever run for political office. And we just said, what the heck? Let's just do it. What's the worst that'll happen? We'll lose. What's the best that'll happen? We'll meet a lot of people. We'll change a lot of opinions. We'll have an impact. And we'll get more people to do what we did. And I think that's exactly what happened. I mean, we didn't all win. Um, but we definitely made an impact and we have to just, we have to keep at it. I mean, 2018 is around the corner. So, Hey, <laughs> go women. <laughs> You're making me really want to move to an area where it's not already all women in office. <laughs> so it can make a difference. <laughs> well, you live in Illinois, so you're, you're in a pretty liberal state. So I have to say, you know, it's great, but yeah, it's a harder slog here, but but, but I also think the other thing I learned, and again, I didn't run for like senator or congressman or anything, was that when I talked to people, there were a few people. I did talk to a couple people. And I remember two of them in particular, you know, they said, oh, you're one of those liberals. Like, I'm not going to vote for you. And I said, well, you can, you know, you can go into the ballot booth and you can vote for whoever you want. And he's like, oh, no, I would never vote for one of those liberals. I'm like, okay, whatever. But, um, but yeah, it's um, people, people just here, they just took me for who I was. And I think, I don't know how much of it was the Trump effect. I really don't. But I did have the sense that for a lot of Republicans, they didn't feel they had to vote Republican. You know, they, I really felt like a lot of people just looked at me as a person and not as a, as a Democrat or a liberal. And I do think that our current administration had something to do with that, that there is a little bit of a stain on the Republican Party. Uh, mm -hmm. so I think that definitely um, that helped, I think, for some people. So I don't think we have talked about election night yet. What was that like? What tell us about how that happened? I've, I've covered election local election nights as a reporter um, back in the day, but I've never I've never seen an election night from the perspective of somebody who actually was um, running for office. So tell us about what that was like. Oh, well, so um, I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but here as the candidate and also the poll watchers, they could go in throughout the day and find out how many votes were cast. Mm -hmm. So my husband had this number. He said, when these many people have voted, you won. I didn't really think that was to have seemed too low to me. So um, it was a super cold day and it rained. Also, so we were out there from 6:30, and so eight o'clock the polls closed, and I was just like, all I want to do is go home, and into you know a heated building, and mm -hmm. you know just warm up and sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've been standing all day, so I didn't stay to see the, the votes counted, um, but other people did. We went home because we were we were expecting people for a party, and so around 8:45. We got phone calls and then people started turning up and we have two polling places. So they're reading us the numbers and we're doing the math. And um, so I learned that I had won by about 845 and there was just so much excitement. I cannot tell you um, when you're somewhere where people have lived for decades and they have never seen a Democrat mm -hmm. in their entire lifetime. And these are Democrats and my, my, you know, my winning, and I'm kind of breaking up just thinking about it, but my winning, it was exciting to me, but I have to say, I'm so humbled by how excited other people were that I had won. I mean, just screaming and yelling and hugging and drinking. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, we were up pretty late, but it was pretty exciting. And, and, um, well, so. and you, you didn't just win, you won by a lot. I won by a lot, yeah. So that was that was really important to us too, because my husband said, I, "If you win by fifty votes, that doesn't matter." He really wanted to be a mandate, and we really wanted to send a message to the other supervisors that this township has just had it. It's not going to be business as usual. It's not going to be status quo. 
things have got to change. You've got to start listening to people. So the only way to do that is to have a clear mandate. And so, yeah, I won, um, I had over 60% of the vote. And uh, we think if it hadn't been raining, it would have been higher. But um, yeah, that was huge. I mean, we boosted turnout by 50%. So normal turnout is about 25%. And we had like 36% turnout. So we were really happy about that too. And, you know, standing at the polls with the other supervisor, they were just like, they looked really unhappy because they saw all these people just streaming in. And of course, higher turnout is always good for them. So it was huge. I mean, this was this was a big deal here. It was a huge deal. Um, we're trying to we're trying to push you know push Democratic candidates further west. And so next year next year we're going to work on on helping some candidates you know in the state house. So that's that's kind of the next thing we're focused on is um, the next the next campaign. But um, yeah, I I get sworn in on January first, so I'm excited. What are you most excited about in terms of what you're going to do in your new role? Oh, dear. That's a tough question. So, <laughs> I, I you don't have to pick just one. You could pick a couple. <laughs> well, it's hard to say excited about because I'm going to be in the minority on a three-person board. So I have two people who are not happy about me joining them, are not happy about losing their colleague who's their you know, third unanimous vote. So... Mm-hmm. It's it's a lot maybe a little more trepidation than excitement, but I guess the most exciting thing for me would be to sit on the other side of the room, to sit on the dais instead of in the audience, and to be able to say things that have never been said out loud before, like to tell people the truth, to, to explain things to people, to tell them where their tax dollars are being spent, to to tell them what's happening in terms of development, and to really make sure people are kept informed and that information gets pushed out and that people get the right information at the right time. That'll that'll help them, you know, help their lives be better, and 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 that's what really people have wanted here. So I guess that's what I'm most excited about. And yeah, but I, there's definitely some trepidation because I am I am going to be the minority vote. Mm-hmm. How long will your term be for? Oh, it's six years. It's a six-year wow. term. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so it's long. Yeah. So there's and there's there's another movement going along, which. Um, I want to mention. So this this one fellow I met, um, again, he was part of one of these citizens groups. And he's a long, he's a lifelong Republican, Bob. And he has been one of my biggest supporters. And he would go around knocking on doors. Oh, you have to vote for Marla. You have to vote for Marla. She's going to stand up for us. And um, he has started this petition drive to increase the board of supervisors from three to five. Because he says, Marla, don't you worry. You know, if, if these guys give you a hard time, I got your back. Don't you worry. I got your back. So he's got this petition going around. And here the rule is to get something on a referendum, you have to get 5% of the registered voters to sign a petition. So he has the votes. So tomorrow morning, he's going down to the, um, the county um, a building to um, turn it in the petition. And if that happens, then we would increase the board of supervisors to five. So I'm excited about that. That um, you know, the people are thinking ahead on how they can how they can improve local government, and and this is another kind of grassroots effort. Yeah, that's great. So, is is it sort of a rotating like one of the terms is up every two years? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Okay. And so maybe two years from now, you won't be the uh, minority vote anymore. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting you said that because we've already been talking to people to stand up to run next time, um, you know, to make sure that we have we have balance. And, you know, we're talking to independents, we're talking to Republicans and, um, you know, just just to get the right person who will be just be professional. That's all they're looking for here. Someone who's professional and honest and, um, you know, who, who's go doing it for the right reason. So, yeah, we're trying to make sure we that the next person is is. Um, Kind of right-minded. So you had a lot of really good advice um, throughout this entire discussion, but what what one piece of advice would you really want to impart to women who are considering running for office? Oh, what, just one? <laughs> no, 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 more than one. Keep them coming. More than one. Okay. So one thing I want to say is if you're a woman running for office, do not, how can I put this? So I'll tell you a story. So um, a friend of mine who ran in a um, uh, nearby township, 
She put on her literature, stay at home mom of three. And I said to her, I said, no, 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 no. Do not say that. She said, well, I am a stay at home mom of three. I said, yes.